it's not every day you hear about a fatal semi-truck collision uh, and then murder charges for the actual driver of the semi-truck, but that's what we're going to talk about today. It is Stacy Cole and Carol Hughes. This story is, um, it's bizarre, and the headline is even more bizarre because I think this is the one story you sent to me. It was something to the effect of semi-driver hits cars and then goes and gets lunch for himself. Wasn't that it? Yeah. He caused a horrific accident. How he walked away from the horrific accident, I have no idea. Because it really looks like an accident that he would have died in, to be honest. Or have been critically injured. And one thing I will point out, sometimes um, people are in such a state of shock after accidents that they can act absolutely normal. And I've, I've seen it um, in some previous work that I used to do. I, and I've heard stories of people being in horrific accidents and acting just fine. And then you find out hours later they're not. But this story, it sounds like this man has been charged or at least they're looking into the fact that he may have been impaired at the time of the crash. So the story goes, a Manteca man is facing a murder charge after police say he drove a semi-truck on a deadly collision course in Parker, Arizona. Police confirm that 28-year-old Karan Singh is from Manteca, and after the fiery crash, he walked away from the scene and went to a restaurant across the street from the accident and ordered lunch for himself. While this is going on, all these people are standing outside, like, trying to help people in the cars that were hit. They're filming it, and he's over there. I, I saw a Pizza Hut in in the video. I don't know if he was at Pizza Hut. I but heard he, went to he a got here. It was a Mexican restaurant and he got a burrito. And it kind of surprises me too that even those people were like, "What's what can we get for you?" While this horrific fire and accident right? is across the street, let me put in your order for a burrito. Yeah, while don't I forget watch the this. extra cheese. You know, I, I'm surprised they even took his order that day. To be honest. But you wouldn't also think that that guy was just in the horrific accident. He must have just been walking past, came in to get a burrito and, you know. You I'm just wondering, did they it. know that he was the driver? Did they know he was involved in the accident? I mean, I, I would think he he might have had blood on him or, or looked disheveled or something. I would think. But, you know, some people might have said they saw him walking away. But, you know, when everything's going on, it would be chaos. And and if somebody just walks away from it, I still have to focus on getting this person help. I can't yeah. focus on the person who's walking away. But maybe they saw him go in the restaurant when the people, when the police showed up. They're like, dude's in the restaurant across the street? I don't just, know. But the whole thing is just bizarre. My guess is he was high as a kite. I don't know. And that's... That's what it sounds like they may be thinking. Surveillance video shows the moment of impact. The semi-truck came barreling at a high speed into three cars that were stopped at a red light, and it basically ran those cars over. The victims inside likely never saw what hit them. The crash left one person dead and several seriously injured. Witnesses say, I've never seen anything so devastating. A woman, Haley Jackson, shot video of the crash aftermath showing the semi-truck bursting into flames with thick smoke rising above the wreckage. Now, Singh is now facing second-degree murder charges as well as eight counts of aggravated assault. Investigators are now waiting for the toxicology reports to show whether he was impaired at the time of the crash. The one thing we're not taking into account is, did he have some sort of medical emergency? But yet, how could that be if he just walked away and ordered a burrito? Maybe he was diabetic and feeling low blood sugar. Who knows? Maybe a concussion. You know, maybe he hit his head so hard that he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. I don't know. I know um, my, my horrible, creepy father was diabetic and he actually harmed somebody. I believe he killed somebody um, before. Well, he was in a, a, accident because I think he had a stroke. He was diabetic. It was either that or low blood sugar or something. Um, but he ended up killing somebody um, in an oh accident. God, uh, that and would be so hard to live with yourself. 
Yeah, well, he didn't have to because he died. Um, oh, <laughs> and I, I don't mean to giggle or laugh, but if you've paid attention to the things I've said about my dad, it's it's okay. Um, but he he ran into somebody. He was having a medical emergency as he was driving, and he ended up putting both feet, one on the gas, one on the brake. And the gas won out for some reason, but he was like spinning his tires. And he plowed into somebody because he, I think he was dead at the wheel is what happened. Oh. And just went stiff and ended up hitting somebody. But I mean, it it took a long time for the insurance companies to settle and everything because basically my dad killed them, mm-hmm. technically. Um, so you know, a, a medical emergency, I could see where maybe you know, like you you aren't sure of what you're doing and you hit the gas really hard or whatever. But the fact that they're doing toxicology tells me that they're looking at impairment, not just medical issue. Yeah. And I think you'd have to do toxicology after an accident that horrific, probably after they probably do it frequently, but someone died. That's what's so weird about it is that I get the medical emergency and that could be it. But the fact that someone would cause that kind of accident, like... There's multiple cars involved. I think they went into a building. There's this horrific fire, including his truck is on fire. And then it's like somehow he got out of there and it's like, oh, burrito. You go, go get one. Right. That's just so strange. It is weird. And I, you know, I'm hoping that if, if he was impaired um, by drugs or alcohol, that, yeah, these charges make sense. The other thing that I'm questioning, though, what if, what if it was a medical emergency? At what point do you say it's an accident versus it's murder? I'm just a little bit curious about how this is going down because something was out of control. And even sometimes with an accident, even though it was an accident, you might have been speeding. You might have ran a red light. Right. There might have been something that on a normal day would be just a basic ticket. But because you ca- ended up causing this horrific accident, then there are charges filed. So I don't know. But just walking away from that and not being like, oh, my God, these people need help. That's the part I guess I find most surprising to me. And to me, that just screams two things. Either one, he was completely stunned and in shock and not aware of his surroundings or he was impaired. Or number two, he just didn't give a shit. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.